Hello and welcome to my latest Patreon video. Uh, this is a rather left field choice um, because uh, this has been inspired by um, a video today from Tabletop Tactics. Uh, Lawrence at Tabletop Tactics is starting a Flesh Terror video, a uh, Flesh Terror army. Um, so the paints we're using here we have um, model color black red and uh, Vallejo, not Vallejo, sorry, Vallejo model color black red. Let's start again. Citadel corn red. Uh, that's the uh, the two colours that we're going to use to sketch out the uh, the red armour. Uh, we then have scale colour black metal with a little bit of Abaddon black mixed into it. Um, that's for the for the for any metal uh, which we're going to put on this. We're going to try and keep uh, try and keep the kind of the whole model kind of dark. Uh, we have um, Vallejo model colour dark grey blue. Uh, it is an air paint. Uh, you don't need an air paint. Um, I, it would be better if you didn't. Uh, the reason why I'm doing the grey first on the model here is because it separates a little bit too quickly on a wet palette. Um, so yeah, it's better if you don't have the um, the air air paints for for throwing on the wet palette. And then uh, Citadel uh, Mornfrang Brown, uh, which also has just a touch of black mixed into it. You can see on the uh, on the wet palette there. So the idea with this video uh, is that we are going to try and sketch out all the all the light direction uh, very very quickly um, get the model looking uh, contrasty uh, keep the light keep the light direction nice and strong uh, so we know that, that we know where the light's coming from uh, and as you can see or as you saw from when I was uh, sketching out on the shoulder pad there I'm trying to move the brush nice and nice and quickly keeping it loose uh, and creating some some interesting shapes um, so I've uh, I've already done the the shoulder pad as you can see up there. Uh, I'm now just kind of sketching out the the lighting positions for uh, all the uh, the ribbed areas for the Under Armour. Um, this is like I said, this is uh, Vallejo dark grey blue. Uh, it's the air paint. If it, if you're using the regular Vallejo paint, um, just water it down about fifty fifty. All the all the paints on the wet palette there are all watered down about fifty fifty water to uh, paint apart from the metallic and the dark grey blue from uh, because that, that that's already watered down because it's the air paint so so we're just just kind of sketching out all the all the rough highlight areas uh, very very quickly so the red um, I want to try and like, I, and again I want to try and keep the brush moving as as quickly and as smoothly as we can uh, I'm trying to be nice and uh, nice and broad uh, long strokes um, kind of sorry not long strokes scribbling strokes but nice and quick um, so we're, we're trying to create some interesting textures as we're going along here um, the the idea is that we're going to well the the black red um, the Vallejo black red here. The, it needs to be pretty much all over the model. We're going to leave a little bit of black showing uh, in some areas just to add a little bit of contrast when we are in in the deep shadows. But very much we're, we're trying to get this all over the all over the model as much as we can. Um, the because it's watered down a little bit, it does it does dry a little bit darker so you can get you can get a little bit of a graduation if you if you work carefully on it um, again I'm, 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 I'm starting to be neat again look I'm trying to uh, I'm trying to make myself be a little bit looser on this um, so that we can get get the model looking looking good so at the end of the video uh, I will try to put up a photograph uh, of the finished model um, I have already put it up on on Patreon, so you can have a look at it. But I'll try and get the photo up on here as well. Uh, it's going to try to be, it's it's almost an acceptable tabletop standard straight away. As soon as you can get the the lighting direction in on the model straight away, it helps a little bit to uh, to kind of pull all the model together. And it look it looks quite cool just in its in itself. Uh, and then the next video, we're going to be refining it and smoothing out a lot of the transitions here. Uh, but we're we're trying to, um, if you the, the easiest way to do uh, the the lighting is just holding it underneath a lamp, uh, hold it square underneath a lamp, and then whenever wherever you see a spot of highlight, you just kind of scribble, scribble on uh, the 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 color around that um, and broaden it a little bit. Um, I'm I'm doing a a lighting uh, from camera right, uh, so if the model was looking straight at the camera. 
uh, I, I tend to do uh, it's, it's the same as my photography as well I tend to light light things camera right as well when I'm doing my photography but uh, the lighting is coming in from high camera right so uh, anything that's facing that direction is going to have a little bit more of a highlight now this is the base red so the actual highlight red that we're going to use is the corn red so this is just kind of um, marking out uh, where the uh, where the uh, highlights are going to start sort of thing if that makes sense so we're going to uh, keep this keep this nice and broad um, nice and wide and then we can narrow it down a little bit when we start getting the corn red on now the, the final highlight when we start refining it the final highlight is not going to go any higher than Mephiston red uh, I want this because it's a flesh terror I want this to be particularly a, a dark color scheme uh, and the the red that we've used here is particularly uh, it's almost like a cold red it's not uh, it's not particularly bright um, it, like the Mephiston red and Evil Sun Scarlet that's that's when you start getting into the kind of the, the warm bright red uh, true reds almost um, so this is a little bit more brown I would imagine uh, you could call it brown so here we go so this is the corn red so this is where we're going to start seeing a little bit more uh, lighting direction coming in and you can see I am I'm, I'm still just kind of scrubbing it on being nice and loose um, and paying attention to where the light is going to be hitting uh, there's, some, there's some areas where you need to be a little bit neat and tidy um, but that's that's more more a case of uh, the, the the finer details like like just underneath which you can't see because the guns there but just underneath that uh, that chest piece there there's just a, a, a very small line that just needs sketching in you can see it there um, so that's that's more of when it's uh, when we need to be neat if, if you like but um, uh, knee pad, uh, same again. So that the camera right, we're going to be catching the top right hand side of the uh, of that knee pad, um, and because it's on a uh, a sphere, because it's a spherical shaped knee pad, that the shape of the highlight itself is going to be round as well. That's just just the way uh, highlights work on on round objects. Um, whereas this this uh, part here, the the thigh, if you like, or the calf calf armor protector, uh, that's going to have a straight highlight. Um, so top side, so we've, we, I think this is, I think that's corn red. Yes, it is. So that's corn red. So the top side of that uh, elbow guard um, has already been done with the black red, but I'm just going to do the top, top side of it with the corn red because that's going to be the side that's facing upwards. So we can really, that's one of the parts that's really going to start selling the, the lighting direction. Um, and so there are certain areas uh, uh, that are similar to that. Uh, for instance, the uh, the knee pads. Uh, so this knee pad here, exactly the same look. We're doing a, a circular circular highlight on the top right hand side, uh, camera right, top right hand side of the knee pad. Uh, so the knee pads, uh, the chest would, if it didn't have all the uh, all the extra accessories on it, um, that would that would be a really good a panel to to sell the um the lighting direction um but also that uh, that um, elbow guard that we painted earlier as well it's always it's it's almost a, a it's almost a bit of a shame that uh, I wanted to do a phobos um I, I wanted to do a phobos marine I didn't want to do a um a, just a regular intercessor um, the the list that uh, that Lawrence was talking about on tabletop tactics, he was getting very excited about. It. He's got thirty incursors in it now. I would love to have painted an incursor rather than a reaver, uh, because they've got less pouches on them, uh, and the chest is a little bit more interesting as well. Um, and and the pouches for me just take a, take away the feel of it a little bit. Um, the way I've painted them, you'll you'll see in a minute. It, it, they kind of stay very dark anyway, so they don't detract that much. But I would just, I, I think it, if I was to do this on a perfect model, I think it would be really cool to try this on an incursor. Um, so that would be the, uh, yeah, that would be my, my preference. So if you have an incursor, I would love to see it. If you want to, if you want to try this, this kind of style uh, and throw it on an incursor, I'd love to see what it looked like. So just catching the so that the ankle ankle guards down here the uh, little ankle joints um, these are going to be another 
uh, a, a, another easy one to uh, to kind of sketch the highlights out on. Uh, you sketch sketch it all of the black red, and then you get a little bit of Mephiston red. Uh, sorry, not Mephiston red, uh, corn red, and just hit the top like that. Uh, now I put a little bit too much on there, so I just wiped the brush off and then just wet blended it uh, together. Just pulled it um, pulled it down towards the black red and just just softened the uh, the edge a little bit. And it's, it's not particularly necessary because we're going to be working on that uh, in the next video anyway, um, but uh, it, it was just a little bit of a heavy mark. Now the, the, the paint there that I'm kind of mixing up, that is the scale colour and uh, Abaddon Black. Um, I, I looked at it and I didn't think it was quite dark enough so I'm just going to put a, another dot drop on and you can see I just mix mix a, a, a corner of the scale metal, uh, scale, sorry, sorry, scale colour black metal. Uh, in with the Amadon Black. Um, so that's the colour that we're going to be doing all the armour trim with uh, and any kind of metallic so that the uh, the blade and the, the gun, we're going to keep the gun nice and simple as well, we're just going to do that uh, metallic. Um, so you can see with the Amadon Black mixed in it's quite a it's a lovely kind of dull, very very dull and dark metal. Um, it's it's, my, it's absolutely my favourite way of painting uh, painting metallic on um, on on models at the moment. Um, so you can you can get it very very dark and then highlight it up with some chrome um, or just some regular scale metal. So so the little pot if you can see that little pot little blob uh, there's a little blob of metallic just above the big mess that I've just mixed uh, that is pure um, black metal. So what we'll do is we we'll kind of uh, throw on a lot of the metallic here um, and then we can um, highlight it in exactly the same way as we've been doing with the red. So I've just got a um, a little bit of the scale metal uh, of the black metal, uh, pure black metal there, just to uh, uh, just to highlight a, or, or place some highlights on the <coughs> on the metallic parts. So we are doing uh, we are doing true metallic uh, on these ones. So we are we are doing uh, some metallic. Uh, using some metallic paints, um, the the metallic is going to be uh, quite a quite an interesting um, uh, take on this. It's going to be quite uh, quite dark um, with uh, very very high contrast on the uh, on the metallic. A bit of fluff. <laughs> Get the fluff off. I don't normally suggest that you put uh, metallic paints on your wet palette, but uh, this this isn't going to be on there for very long. I'm going to remove that as pretty much as soon as I finish this video. Um, I hear a lot of people uh, saying that you can get metallic flakes uh, falling off into the water. Uh, I've not I've not really seen that, um, but. Uh, <coughs> It's better to ear on the side of caution, I suppose. Um, so it will be coming straight off. I'm just trying to pick out uh, all all the all the smaller details now uh, and picking out some of the bits that I uh, that I haven't done. And so a lot a lot on the back. The back is going to be uh, if you, if you think of the same uh, lighting direction uh, as the front. Uh, when I turn the model round to the back, uh, the light will be coming from camera left. So we're going to be trying to pay attention to, uh, to to that when we do when we do the uh, the, the the red and the and the highlights on the back. Um, the back I I, I do uh, even more quickly if you like because there's not a lot there's not a lot of uh, armor plates on the back. Um, so we can get away with uh, with being a little bit quicker. There's I think there's the uh, the calf calf armor. Uh, a little bit on the thigh, uh, and that's about it. Um, there's not really that much on the back in terms of red. Uh, it's all pouches again. It's all pouches and uh, and scabbards, knife scabbards and things. <coughs> the large, massive machete that the reavers carry. Just ticking, ticking some of the uh, the the edges with the corn red. Um, it's the easiest way to, uh, to to have a little bit of a of a highlight around here. <coughs> uh, 
again we've, we've got to give yourself room to be able to kind of refine these down afterwards so don't worry about uh, how how fine or neat they are uh, the whole point the whole point of this is to try to, uh, to to speed up and get a model looking pretty good straight away and you can see the lighting directions now starting to, to show a little bit on the from the front um, the like I say the the knee pads uh, really sell it uh, being being the the uh, top right uh, lighting so this is Morn Fang Brown again <coughs> Morn Fang Brown and uh, it's uh, again it's one to one uh, with water and paint um, and because of this you can scrub it on the model nice and nice and loosely uh, and you will get some interesting textures on the leather as well um, it, it it does cover quite well um, it definitely covers absolutely fine with two two layers um, of this so if you want to build up a highlight uh, I think I go back to some of these pouches in a second and just build up the highlight uh, on the top side of all the pouches uh, just to help sell the <coughs> lighting direction again <coughs> I mustn't make a video without a glass of water with me <laughs> So just being nice and quick. The uh, the brush that I'm using is uh, is not a brand new brush. Um, uh, you won't want to be kind of scribbling like this with uh, with a brand new brush. You would be putting too much friction on the on the on the new tip. Um, so uh, get 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 a brush that uh, I think this one's a couple of months old. Um, so get a brush that's not not exactly the, um, your finest. Uh, it's not your neatest, not your sharpest point, uh, and then you can. Uh, scribble on a little bit, a little bit freer. That's uh, that's the Mornfang Brown pretty much on. We're going to tick the uh, the upper edges of all the uh, of all the straps as well, um, and leaving leaving a little bit of black in the recesses just to sell sell that uh, contrast again and try and keep. I do like. Um, I've been trying to do like a really really high contrast. Uh, model for a while, so this would be a, a, a really good, uh, a really good time for it. Um, the Necrons always have been a little bit uh, more blue, um, so uh, rather than rather than contrasty, if you like. Um, so that it, even in the shadows on the Necrons, have still been quite blue. Whereas this, I'm I'm trying to keep it very very dark and very black in the in the recesses. So uh, especially, I think this is going to really work very well with the uh, only having a Mephiston red as a as a top highlight. So moving on to the gun, um, keeping keeping the uh, uh, brush moving along the length of the gun. Um, so trying to uh, flick flick the highlights coming upwards. Uh, again, this is this is just the uh, the black metal and uh, Abaddon black mix. Uh, the, the the whole gun. I mean, if you wanted to paint the if you wanted to paint the um, uh, the casing of the gun a different colour, uh, a very dark blue would also work. Uh, that would be quite cool. Uh, see a very very dark blue one, or you could just do the same, the same style as the uh, as the red armour on the casing. So scribble on some uh, some black red, uh, and then highlight it up with some corn red, just uh, so that the, the the highlight positions would be the same as where I'm placing the highlight now with the with the scale colour black metal. Uh, this is pure black metal, just to tick the highlights. Um, just across the top of the gun. <laughs> I'm trying to, I'm trying to be as quick as I can with uh, with the, with this painting and keeping it nice and loose and uh, uh, yeah, I keep drifting, drifting uh, out of shot. He's <laughs> covering it up. So sorry about that. So back to the back to the uh, black red. So I, uh, as I was doing the gun, I noticed that I'd missed um, missed some of the underside of the uh, of the hand and things and the fingers. So uh, just kind of going back with some black red. Uh, I did have to mix it up for some reason. That colour does separate quite quickly. Um, so we're onto the back of the model now, um, and you can see we're this is this is a perfect example of just kind of scribbling the the paint on um, down on these sides, uh, introducing some texture that we're going to build on in the next video so um, any kind of interesting texture marks that you get on this you can then en enhance and you just end up with a little bit more of an interesting uh, view on the 
uh, interesting. It's in, a little bit more interesting on the eye. <coughs> so they're, 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 these are the calf, the calf armor plates that I was talking about. So these are basically the the only parts of the back of the model that you really need to concentrate on. Uh, those and the ankles. Um, everything else is just covered up with pouches. So the the, the calf calf armor pads just make sure that we are catching um, catching this uh, this upward edge. And then the same with the ankles as well, the ankle plates. Scribble it all down, um, and then that 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 highlight we will enhance and uh, refine later on. It's been good fun to do this one actually. Um, I'm I'm quite uh, after seeing it finished, and obviously I sent a sent a video to uh, well sent a picture to uh, Lawrence. Uh, and he uh, he approves if you like, um, but getting this one done is is uh, it's quite interesting. I want to do I want to do a uh, almost I want to do like a a character model, something a little bit more uh, detailed or a little a little larger. Um, well, maybe not detailed actually because there's 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 so many pouches on this one. I don't like it. Um, but uh, yeah, just something with a little bit more character on it than just a a regular reaver. This is a a push fit one as well, so one of the easy build reavers. Um, so that the, the detail isn't quite as crisp and as strong as uh, as, as regular regular model kits from the Games Workshop range. So you could have got away as well uh, on that bit on the on the top side there uh, of the back. Um, you could have gotten away with putting a highlight all the way across the top of the shoulders. Um, like across the shoulder blades, I didn't put that one on there. Um, it might be something that we add uh, later in the in the next video. And just uh, adding the little bit of the strap to the grenade. Again, that's just a little bit of Mornfang brown. And um, because I did this first um, and uh, and let it kind of fade in, I'm just putting a second coat on just in the centre, uh, just to just to bring it up a little bit, and then adding a tiny little highlight towards the back as well. Um, so just two coats, and y y it'll get a little bit brighter. Um, so we can we can build on um, build on that uh, that first coat, which um, uh, darkened as it as it dried. And now um, the last the last bit uh, is going to be the purity seal. So the purity seal, because it's going to be uh, quite a pale colour, uh, I'm just going to put um, uh, Mornfram Brown all the way over it. So we're going to start with Mornfram Brown on this, and then we're going to highlight it up uh, in the next video with uh, probably something like uh, Ushapti Bone. Um, the the purity seal here is going to be an interesting one. So I go straight in with um, with Corn Red uh, now. Because the rest of the um, the armor is going to be quite a dark red, I think I might take this and um, make it quite a warm, um, warm purity seal. So we can uh, we can uh, give it a wash of uh, something like Reichlin Flesh Shade, and then take it all the way up to um, uh, almost like uh, Troll Slayer Orange, and take it up to a to a very warm highlight, uh, and then that will uh, that will stand out really well against the the colder red of the armor. Colder and very much darker red of the armor as well. So this is uh, this is uh, a, a just a quick uh, quick check of um, the uh, the true metallic highlights. Uh, so this is scale color, uh, just regular black metal uh, without the abaddon mixed in, uh, just ticking the edges um, and the, well the top edges. Don't touch the bottom edges. So just ticking the top edges of uh, of all the metallic. And then just adding a little bit of a, a specular highlight on the centre of the blade as well. There we go. So that is the end of the part one of the first video, uh, painting the flesh terror. I hope you enjoyed that one, guys. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun refining that as we go along into part two. Uh, until then. Take care and thank you very much for watching.